Hi, from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back. We're here getting towards the end of day three of live coverage from Red Hat Summit 2016. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with Brian Gracely, and happy to have on the program first time guest, uh, Jose Miguel Parella, uh, who's the open source product manager from Microsoft Azure. Thank you for joining us. No, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, your, your colleague, uh, jo Joseph Soroche, uh, gave the keynote this afternoon. We actually had him on theCUBE earlier this week down the street at Hadoop Summit, so another open source show. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things I think everybody here is still like, wait, Microsoft's here. And they've got like little penguins that says like Microsoft, you know, Hearts, Linux, and things like that. Um, t tell us a little bit about your job and your role with open source. Yeah, so the penguins were really, really popular, I guess. Um, <laughs> and a bunch of other things that we had here. It was the first time uh, at Red Hat Summit. And, uh, but you do see a pattern in this open source events, and um, I think it reflects on the, the Microsoft journey with open source and what we have in, uh, in Azure in terms of an open and hybrid cloud. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a number of people in the company working on, on many different areas in uh, open source innovation. Uh, we have a very comprehensive approach to open source. Uh, it starts with enabling open source technologies, releasing uh, code. Earlier this week, we talked about .NET Core, ASP.NET Core, uh, and the support on Red Hat Enterprise Linux in particular. Uh, and then also, obviously, contributions to open source, but also integration of open source technologies into first party solutions like Azure Container Service and others. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the keynote started out with this whole space uh, aspects of what you're doing. Uh, we had uh, one of the JPL guys on today talking about, uh, what's it, the HoloLens right. uh, type stuff. So how, how does that fit into uh, some of the things you're doing? Well, I think it, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about the, the next uh, revolution, next industrial revolution, and uh, what role open source, open data, artificial intelligence, big data plays. Um, yeah, I think all of the, 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 the space theme helps uh, illustrate you know, what you do when you have those vast amounts of, of things to process and uh, how all the, the, the theme of open can help you achieve that, but also the cloud, right? Because um, it offers you that uh, flexible fabric, uh, scalable fabric, and across the globe. Uh, Azure operates today in 32 different regions. Um, uh, 24 of them are online now. So it's, uh, it's really exciting times, but um, Participating at Red Hat Summit, I think uh, it has been critical to think ahead in terms of uh, what our customers want. Uh, customer choice and customer demand is driving a lot of the innovation that we see in the market. Um, and as Joseph said at the keynote, you know, there are areas where uh, we truly believe that open source R is, is going to be where uh, uh, statisticians and data scientists are going to be at, uh, in, the, in fact, are today. That, yeah. Yeah. Would, you, would you walk us through some of the announcements that you guys made this week? Yes, so uh, in the context of Red Hat Summit, we had a number of announcements this week that you'll find in the official Microsoft blog. Um, so I already mentioned .NET Core 1.0 and ASP.NET Core 1.0 and their availability in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, we also announced a template for uh, OpenShift that's available um, just to easily deploy OpenShift uh, in, in Azure. So today it's an OpenShift origin uh, template uh, that you can deploy on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, that's actually what we used for today's demo where we demoed uh, SQL Server running on a container um, uh, at the keynote. Uh, we also announced support in China. So it's a very interesting partnership milestone. Our, our, uh, you know, our partnership started in November, um, but we're bringing it to, to the regions where we operate and Azure China is a very interesting one. Um, you know that in Azure, nearly one in three VMs run Linux today. Uh, in China, actually, more than half of our VMs run Linux. Uh, so we straight see strong demand, especially in the enterprise, for, for those type of solutions. Um, so those are some of the, uh, the interesting areas. And, and obviously, I think that uh, something that, that got people really excited today was uh, that we actually demoed the installation process of uh, SQL Server on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Yeah, you talked about a third of the, the VMs on, on Azure up to half the VMs. Last week, we were at DockerCon. I mean, huge number of demonstrations with, with Docker so, you know, showing open source integration. What, what's the things that you're doing to, to get people to go? Uh, in, in the keynote today, they made a statement. They said, Azure's the most open public cloud. What are you doing to educate people, to help them understand that, that Microsoft is really committed to open source, to Linux, to open data? How is that, that kind of getting out into the world? I think participation in the ecosystem is, is critical, and it's been a, an incredible year. Uh, you know, one year ago we were at LinuxCon in Seattle, and since then, you know, I can uh, recall a number of events, including All Things Open in Raleigh, actually uh, Red Hat's uh, Red Hat's headquarter. Um, and, and you know, it's 
participating and committing to that participation, I think, has been critical. Getting out there, getting in front of the community. Uh, we get a lot of our engineers, get a lot of our program managers out there uh, engaging with, uh, with customers, with partners, and with uh, project leaders as well. Uh, so those, those, uh, those things have been really critical. And I also think that um, communicating and, and openly discussing our approach uh, to open source in the cloud has been important. But also helping customers navigate the open source world has been important as well. Uh, if you think of .NET and SQL, for example, products that are traditional uh, Microsoft products for the enterprise now, um, you know, increasingly, uh, uh, um, um, you know, getting getting closer to Linux in the open source world, um, customers are starting to to look for the organizations that can help them understand and navigate that world. The other area that you mentioned, and you're absolutely right, is containers. Yeah. Um, we have seen since January about uh, you know. Uh, the number of customers doing containers in Azure has quadruplicated, um, and, and our approach, our, our portfolio of solutions now is really broad. You know, we started with this little thing. If you have a VM, we'll attach Docker to it. And you know, just recently we announced GA of Azure Container Service, and in between of that journey, we have done partnerships with you know many things that we have in marketplace with companies like CoreOS. We have uh, full pass solutions like OpenShift available uh, in Azure. So providing that full spectrum. Let's just talk about the use cases of containers in the cloud. If you want to start easy, you have Azure Container Service. Does that mean that you have to give away choice? Absolutely not. You have your choice of Swarm, DCOS to, to implement the orchestrator. Do you already have a strategy in place with something like OpenShift? Then that's perfectly fine. It supports Azure as well, and you can move your workloads too. Yeah. But what are you seeing in terms of uptick? I mean, we, we heard a lot this week about containers. You're doing a lot of work with OpenShift. What are you seeing from your customers, especially, say, the .NET customers, in terms of them wanting to build these more sort of modern cloud-native applications? Are, are they comfortable with the idea? Are they beginning to, to use the tools more and more? Well, in the .NET world, it's still early days. In fact, the .NET support in OpenShift is still a few days out. Um, it's one of the things that we were talking about this, uh, this week. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I think the key has been to offer architectural choices. So you have containers, you want to approach microservices that route, you want to do it with a platform like OpenShift, you want to do it with something else like Service Fabric, for example, you have that, that, that route. But you know, if you're still thinking in terms of IaaS, you're still thinking in terms of VMs, and you find you, know, you, you have a, a sophisticated image management uh, practice, uh, you have images and VHDs that are really stateless, if you will, then we have things like scale sets. And so with scale sets, you can realize that kind of modern next generation applications without necessarily going all in containers. In fact, things like Azure Container Service are built on those core capabilities of Azure, like, like, like scale sets. So you know, I would say that we have a continuum of customers in different stages uh, you know, of, of sophistication when it comes to those uh, cloud native applications. Yeah. Jose, talking about applications, one, one of the things that I, I think had the biggest ripple effects in the communities I watch is how Microsoft has allowed the movement of some core applications either to cloud enable them and or to you know, support them on Linux. Can, can you talk a little bit about you know, kind of some of the reasons why Microsoft's doing that and what, what you see is kind of the future of applications there? Well, it certainly is uh, customer demand and what customers uh, you know, want organizations that support enterprise um, uh, or use cases like Microsoft do. Um, there are many areas where, it, you know, like IoT, like containers, like big data, where you definitely see Linux and open source uh, driving innovation. I think it's been a big topic here at, uh, at Red Hat Summit for sure. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the ability to offer uh, products that the enterprise really like, like, like SQL Server and .NET, um, is, is only going to bring uh, good things to the ecosystem. Uh, and again, it's a journey we're learning a lot uh, as well. Um, we've been, you know, over 10 years uh, engaging with the open source community in one way or another, but I think we're learning a lot through this participation with the ecosystem and, uh, you know, the, the way of, of doing things. And we have so many anecdotes um, through our engagement here at Red Hat Summit. Uh, you know, the demo that we showed of OpenShift uh, and how we work with the OpenShift team at Red Hat to make the, the, the demo of the keynote happen is just one of many examples. Yeah. Earlier this year, uh, Microsoft made an announcement of something called Azure Stack, essentially taking you know, Azure, the public cloud, being able to, to instantiate that on, on premises. Um, Azure Cloud is obviously, again, like you said, very focused on open source. Will we see that, that open source focus extend out to Azure Stack as well as it becomes GA later in the year? It is certainly our intention. There are already, um, um, just think of it this way, uh, things like Azure Resource Manager templates 
Uh, we host uh, hundreds of them in, in, on GitHub today. Um, most of them, because of the, uh, it's very easy to distribute open source uh, um, base images for the community. So most of them that are provided by the community are already open source solutions. So you want to deploy a you know, Datastax cluster, or do you want to deploy a MariaDB uh, a cluster, you can do those with, uh, with, uh, with ARM templates today. Um, now, with Azure Stack, the promise is that you'll be able to point those templates out to your Azure Stack deployment. Um, now, the question is, where is the image coming from? Right, because in the public cloud is is uh, easy to understand. You have a marketplace. There's a billing integration. It's easy for a partner to offer that image. In Azure Stack, it's a little bit more nuanced. Um, so customers will have to um, navigate a little bit of that world of, of, of providing your own your own images for, from a technology standpoint. That is absolutely our, in, our intent. In fact, we do have a, an interesting demo with um, with one of our partners, Canonical, um, just pointing out the Azure CLI, the command line tools. You, you know, pointing out to public cloud, pointing out to to an Azure Stack cluster. It's currently in preview. Um, and it, it works. Uh, it works exactly the same. Um, partially, it's also because um, all of our SDK and tool strategy has also moved to uh, to an open way of doing things. Now we no longer publish the SDK, and you hope that it matches the API. We just public a spec for the API, and we auto generate the SDKs for things like .NET, Node.js, etc. It's called AutoRest. Um, so that lets us, you know, have that feature parity across tools. That a few years ago, you know, there was a lot of customer demand for that for sure. Yeah, so Jose, I'm curious, what, what's your take now that you've been working on open source for a while uh, to, to be able to be out in public more, your interaction with, with, with the users, uh, you know, to, to, to tell us what that's been like. Well, the, uh, the, our participation at Red Hat Summit has surpassed you know, all of our expectations in terms of the, uh, the excitement that customers, partners, and product leaders have. Um, as I said, it's not only about the, the squishy penguins uh, that uh, you know are, are certainly something that, that people like, or the Microsoft loves Linux stickers that are you know also really popular. And I was asking them, what are you doing with those stickers? And they're giving it out to their Windows counterparts in the enterprise, and just you know, um, so we definitely think that's great, and that we have more of that um, peer-to-peer -peer education on, on this open source capabilities too. Uh, but the engagement has been f fantastic. I think we've, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about uh, you know what what enterprise open source needs really, uh, what customers in the enterprise really really need from an open source provider. And uh, I think what's clear is that in our approach, the partnerships are going to play a, a key a key a key uh, a key part of it, right? Like uh, Jim Whitehurst said, there's no single vendor that can that can fulfill all of these needs today. As open source drive that innovation and decision makers to start looking at open source as a critical part of the digital transformation, literally quoting a, an analyst, um, I think that uh, they're going to start looking more at uh, vendors like Microsoft and partners like Red Hat uh, to make sure that we deliver on that promise. Well, uh, the, the only last piece of feedback I'll give you is if you can get those hoodies in the Microsoft Store, uh, I think you've got a winner on your hands there. Awesome, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we're getting towards the end of three days of coverage here from Red Hat Summit 2016. Uh, thank you to our guests from Microsoft, and you're watching theCUBE.